enough is enough. Say it one more time to the devil now. For the very last time. There is power in what you say. I've given you a mouth and a wisdom that the adversary will not be able to resist nor gain say. Your mouth is a weapon for your deliverance. Your mouth is a weapon for your liberty. For the very last time right now, say it with all your zest. As you have said this morning, that's how God will confirm it in the name of Jesus. Because you have said so, so shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please, you may be seated in God's presence. Help me welcome your neighbor to your left and to your right. Tell him how you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Tell him that you are living here with your testimony. And Satan is living with shame. Because your liberty is already guaranteed this month. In the name of Jesus. I welcome you God's people to this very, very special service. Tag enough is enough service. It's a special anointing service. Where God will be liberating men from everything that have hitherto held them down by the devil. God does not play with words. God will always say what he means. And God means whatever he says. So get set. This morning, whatever it is that is not of God that is happening in your life, whatever negative experiences that you have been having, today, it is over in the name of Jesus. Today, it is over in the name of Jesus. Our prophetic team for the month is the supernatural is my new realm in redemption. The supernatural is my new realm in redemption. And our Sunday teachings that we started ever since the month started is titled Engaging the Supernatural Power of Love. Engaging the Supernatural Power of Love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verses 1 to 3 and verse 8 is our key scriptures for this teaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verses 1 to 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Verse 2. He said, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, which is love, I am nothing. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me Nothing. Verse 8. Verse 8. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So as it were, love is the greatest. Love is the greatest. And love is that master key to a world of the supernatural. Love. Love is the greatest and the master key to the world of the supernatural. Matthew chapter 22 and verses 36 to 40. Master which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Praise the name of the Lord. So the love of God in the heart of man is a fundamental requirement for a life of the supernatural. The love of God in the heart of man is a fundamental requirement. Everything will fail. Prophecy will fail. Tongues will cease. But love, love, you want to walk consistently in the life of the supernatural. This is the key. The love of God. The love. Love summarizing two major aspects. Love for God and love for men, for mankind, for men. Love for God. And love for man. The Bible says on these two keys rest all the other laws. The deeper your love for God, the greater you rise on the earth. The deeper your love for God, the greater you rise on the earth. Instead of praying for promotions, Instead of praying for lifting, just intensify your love for God. Not love, not love only by words. True love is expressed in action. And one of the ways to show you love God is the pursuit of soul for their salvation and their establishment in the kingdom. It's not enough to sing. Action. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. You are God. I love you, Lord. Because you are here, but action, I want to see it. Love is no love until it is expressed. Passion for soul proves you love God. Passion for souls, for his kingdom, for the establishment of soul in his kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Love. Love is no love until it is doing something, until it is a, an acting love. Practical love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. There must be something you are sacrificing for the expansion of God's kingdom to show you love him. He gave his only begotten son, for the rescue. If this love you say you love God is not touching you, then you have not started. I'm not started. If a man is in courtship, and every time you go to the lady, I, I, I just love you. I just love you, but I just need some transport money. I, I just love you. I, you know I love you. I love you. Yeah, I love you. And you go to the supermarket, I just love you, honey. I just love you. I, can I have some, some ice cream? Collecting, collecting, collecting. Nothing is going out of you. Check that kind of love. Check that kind of love, but to be sure the person is not a gold digger. Praise the name of the Lord. Love is no love until it is paying a price. Love is no love until something is being sacrificed. You say you love God. Outreach, they won't see you. Morning rate, you are not there. Evening rate, you are not there. How many weeks have passed? You don't have one soul to show. Establish in the church and in faith. What kind of love is it? The love that just comes in to take and take and take and take. Just come to serve. You know my own, I just come to service to hear God's word. Other people that are working, are they hearing the devil's word? Praise the Lord. So just come. Here and go. Here and go. Here and go. Eat and go. 
know any expression. If a man is eating and eating and eating and is not going to the toilet, you know what it will be? Constipation. Praise the name of the Lord. The pursuit of soul, the passionate pursuit for souls and his kingdom is a sure demonstration of the law. And then when God sees that, he keeps raising you. He keeps raising you. Psalm 91 and verse 14. He said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. I will set him on high. You don't even need to pray for lifting. You don't even need to pray for change of position. When you love God and you so show it, God is committed. God is committed. The deeper your love for him, the greater you rise in life. It is your heart that determines your path in this kingdom. Your heart. Your heart is what determines your path. Your heart. Your heart determines your portion, your path. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. God needs your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. Give, where is your heart? God said, give me your heart. I'm the reason why you are alive. I'm the reason why you wake up every day. I'm the owner of your breath. And you are so focused on any other thing. You have no, no space for me. My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. He's the reason for your breath. And you don't have time for him. You don't have time for his assignment. The things of God does not matter to you. All that you pursue and pursue and pursue and you are pursuing your job. You know my business, my job, my children, my, my, who told you is yours? There is nothing a man has that is also given. If God takes that breath, God forbid, he takes that breath. That's all. And the owner of that breath said, give me your heart. Give me your heart. If the way you love your job is the way you love God, your life will not have been the same. If the way you pursue after money, money, if that is the way you pursue after God, ah, somebody gives you an appointment for money. 11 a.m. By 7.30 you are there. But come from outreach, you are not there. Even church service, you just struggle. Only Sunday, Sunday. And even that Sunday, no soul, you are not bringing nobody. My son, give me your heart. There are people here every Sunday. They come here with less, nothing less than three, four souls. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Praise the name of the Lord. Every Sunday. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Give me your heart. It's time to wake up. God does not respect title. God only respects those who respect his instruction. Give me your heart. If you are too busy for God, he will be too busy for you. He will be too busy for you. He will be too busy for you. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Hallelujah. Because someone Bishop she had the other time, he said, when Operation, whatever, Operation 615 started, till now, they have, I think, about 17,000. 18. 18,000. 18,000. This operation, <laughs> when I heard it, I said, oh God, quicken us. And some people don't even have one soul, one established soul in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. One established show in the church. For this operation, 615 now, by the grace of God, as your pastor, with my own little team, for this 615 now, we are heading to about 100 souls now. Some of them are in Bible school. Praise the name of the Lord. Yesterday we were in the rains for outreach. 
you know, all the pastors are rich. And some people, nothing is moving them, moving them, moving them. They have not brought one soul, established soul to church. Wake up! Look at your neighbor for me and ask him, where is your soul? Where is your soul? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, no throw away eye now. You are the talk to, no throw away face. Where your soul? Where your soul? Praise the name of the Lord. Where your soul? I'm not talking about your wife or your husband. Where is your soul? Where is your soul? Praise the name of the Lord. This week you must be more aggressive. We have only two weeks to go. Wake up. Give me your heart. That's what God is saying. Give me your heart. And then you will see how I will give you the whole earth. Until you give God your heart. He can't give you the earth. The love of God in many believers' lives has gone cold. And that's the strategy of the devil. No matter what they say, it doesn't touch them. They will look and say, ah, that one now, your own, they say, oh, if you like, make you shout from today to tomorrow. You know, go see me. When you tire, you go keep quiet. Nothing touches them. It's a satanic end time traps. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verses 1 to 5, the Bible says, This know also, that in the last day, perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of themselves. Lovers selfishness. Lovers of themselves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemous. Disobedience to parents. No matter what instruction they give on the altar, they will say, do their own. I know go come. Now by force. Disobedience to parents, both spiritual parents also. Unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. They see somebody going for outreach and say, oh, bros. Now wow, where do they go? Is it a money raid? Now wow. Raid, raid. This one I read, when I know they tire, we too will be Christian now. Which one you do? They will be mocking those who are doing something good. Now you kill Jesus. Never do. Now only God knows those who they will deserve more. Men also know. Not to go legal. Praise the name of the Lord. Traitors. Heady. High-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Verse 4, verse 4. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such people. Turn away. They have a form of godliness. You know? They know all the languages. It's my new era. It is well. You are blessed. You are highly favored. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. They have all the spiritual languages. They carry a form of godliness. But they don't believe in the power of the instruction that they have received. Operation 615 is our covenant access to enthronement. They don't believe. They interpret it another way. They hear. They speak, but they don't believe. And so they don't act. You can't see any action in their life. They even try to discourage those doing it. Turn from such. Is an end time trick of the devil. The love of many have was God. If this kind of reviver, nothing is moving you, ah, it is risky. It is risky. Praise the name of the Lord. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Unto the angel of the church in Ephesus writes, This thing said he that 
holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works and your labors and thy patience, how that thou cannot bear them that are evil, and thou art tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and I found them liars, and I bore and I have patience. And for my name's sake, thou hast labor and have not fainted. I know how you were before. Nevertheless, I have something against you. Thou hast left your first love. Remember therefore where thou hast fallen and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove your candlestick out of the place. Except thou repent. That will not be your portion. I have something against you. You have left your first love. That burning and aggressive passion for soul winning and soul establishment, you have left your first law. When this operation 615 started, were well, you not all out? But what is happening? Have you gotten so tired so quickly? Where are those converts that God gave to you? Where are they? He said, I have something against you. You have left your first love. Return back to your first works. You who used to bring people to church with your vehicle. You who used to hire boss to bring people to church. You have left your first love. He said, repent and return. Repent and return. So that your candlestick will not be removed. When one is rooted and grounded in love, he becomes a ground commander of the supernatural. Because you are full of the fullness of God. First John chapter 4 and verse 16. First John chapter 4 and verse 16. And we know. And believe the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. And if God dwells in you. Eh? Exodus 15, 11 becomes a reality. Who is like unto you, O God? Who is like unto you among all the gods? You are glorious in holiness. Fearful in praises. Doing wonders. Is the wonder working God? If the wonder working God resides in you, you become a grand commander of the miraculous, of the supernatural. You command it at will. Praise the name of Jesus. Love for God, love for the souls of men, love for the souls of men. The secret of men of exploit in scriptures was the love of God. The love of God. David, 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14, a man after my own heart, the greatest. He was enthroned. Why? Because he gave God his heart. Your heart is what determines your path. 1 Samuel chapter 13, 14, David, the man after my own heart. Job was a man that feared God. Job chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and you look at verses 7 to 8. He was a man that loved God. He hates sin. He has chewed evil, walking in the precept and the status of God. Job chapter 1, and verses 1 to 3. He was a man that walked in the fear of God. Perfect and upright. Feared God. He has chewed evil. And God made sure that no evil could touch him. Praise the name of the Lord. Talk about Daniel. A man that loved God to a point of sacrifice in his life. He made up his mind. Daniel 1.8 I will not define myself with the king's name. My life is sold to him just to please him. He gave his heart. He proposed in his heart. God was the one beating in his heart. Everything to please God was what was beating in his heart. And we saw how he was enthroned in Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 to 30. Daniel 3, 
14 to 30. Praise the name of the Lord. He was a man that believed in pleasing God. What will you say about Paul, the apostle? Philippians 1.21 For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. He was a man totally sacrificed to God. Everything about him was to please God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16, he says, I have nothing to glory in preaching the gospel. Necessity is laid upon me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Necessity, his entire life was sold out to God. No reputation, no anything, everything sold out to God. And no wonder we saw this man commanded signs and wonders. The supernatural at will. Handkerchiefs and apron taken from his body. Healing the sick. Diverse kinds of healing through his hands. Because he was a man who was sold out to God. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I. The life I live, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm crucified with Christ. Crucified. Nothing can stand as an impediment for his having God. Whether there is sun, whether there is rain, whether there is money. Eh, nothing. Not even his business. Not even his, his, his work. Nothing. Committed. Sold out totally to God. <laughs> In Romans chapter 8, we saw how he gave a very good picture of his love. Romans 8, 35 to 38. Romans 8, 35 and to 38. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tell me. Is it tribulation? No way. Distress? Persecution? <laughs> you can mock me till tomorrow. The more you mock, the more I'm fired. Famine? Food? What is food? Nakedness, clothes, but no, that one is not. Or peri or sword. What is it? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are killed all the day long. Discomfort, antagonism, whatever it is, blackmail, it can stop us. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yes. Nay! In all these things we are more than conquerors to him that love us. He says, for I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor pre things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. This was a life totally sold out to God. Can God say the same thing concerning Because you didn't have enough money in your pocket. You are angry with God. Because you are feeling a little weak. You are angry with God. Where else should you run to? It should not be Zion. Because you feel God has not answered that your request. And so, your tempo of Seeking souls. Shh. All these souls I've been bringing up to now, should I not be, be, be married? That's how I keep bringing souls into the kingdom. Me, I say, you should just give me one person to marry. One person. Eh? One person. I've won how many souls now? 20 souls. You'll give me one person to marry. He didn't answer me. Okay. Until the day he answered me. No more outreach. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul says, nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Love will make you a commander of the supernatural. What are the divine virtues of love? What are the divine virtues of love? Number one, love provokes supernatural favor. Love provokes Supernatural favor. Psalm 102, verses 15, verses 13 to 15. 
Love provokes supernatural favor. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Ye, the set time is come. For thy servant take pleasure in her stones and favor the doors thereof, so the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings his glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you favor the things of the kingdom, he said, God will favor you. Because of the love of God, you are running after the kingdom. God says, I will favor you. I will favor you. In Luke 22, 35, they went everywhere. They didn't have need of anything. They just enjoyed favor everywhere they went to. Luke 22, 35. That's what God's favor does. It makes for sufficiency of every good thing. Number two, virtue. Divine virtue of love. Love provokes supernatural change of status. Love provokes supernatural change of status. Jeremiah 30, 19-21 When the multiplication of God's kingdom is your concern, is your priority, God will multiply you and change your status from one realm of glory to another. I will multiply them, I will glorify them, I will honor them. They shall not be small. Nobles shall come from their midst. Governors shall come from their midst. And I will cause him to draw near and shall approach unto me. For who is he that engages his heart to approach unto me? So when you engage your heart to God, God ensures consistent change of level. Luke 19.13 he says, I will make sure that you occupy, occupy enviable positions. I will make sure that you are dignified. So God changes our status when our heart is all out for him. Number three, virtue. Divine virtue of love. Love is our covenant channel for the flow of the supernatural. For the flow of the supernatural. Love is a covenant channel through which the supernatural flows. When you love God, there will be compassion in your heart. And when there is compassion, compassion becomes a trigger for the supernatural. When God sees compassion, he causes a flow of the supernatural through your hands. See the testimony here about our young Wolfby student. Just came contacted knowledge. And he went. Somebody was there praying. Nothing was happening. But he was filled with compassion. See this way. She's falling and rising and falling and rising. Praise the name of the Lord. And he prayed passionately from his heart. Prayed passionately from his heart. From the way he was sharing the testimony. He was almost praying for everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. And then suddenly the power sorts out. When God sees compassion, he responds. If you have compassion for the souls, it will show the way you talk to them. It will show the way you talk to them. You see somebody and you are just telling him, Bros, how now? See him below. Try come here. Uh, and if, if no chance, no problem, God understand. But just speak. Praise the name of the Lord. And God don't see your heart at least. Passion. You see somebody in problem who have shared a problem before you with you before. You take the issue of that person with the ultimate aim to win that person to Christ. I was so touched by the testimony somebody shared. How that somebody ministered to him and some members of his family. And since that day, that person took it as a responsibility to get them established. Supplying to their financial need. Was it not this service we shared that testimony? Did you hear that testimony at all? Did you hear it very well? So it's not just say I love God and no sacrifice from you. No, love God, it goes with many things. It goes with many things. It goes with many things. It will take part of you. To get a soul established is, 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 is an assignment that will take whole heart. 
Praise the name of the Lord. The other time, one of my converts, you know, came, ah, how are you? I've not seen you for two days. They say, yes, it's his daughter that was strong and is in the hospital and all that, all that. So he came and said, see me in the office. I'll pray for you. Pray for the daughter. Pray for him. How much is the uh, uh, I mean, hospital bill? He mentioned me. I counted my money. I gave him, you know, pray for him. The answer with a better amen. If it is you, won't you say a better amen? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Love, compassion will stretch you out. Compassion will stretch you out to do something. Praise the name of the Lord. And then you will see the flow of the supernatural. Mark chapter 1, verses 39 to 42. We saw how compassion cause the healing power to flow from Jesus to that person that was sick. Look, Mark chapter 1, verses 39 to 42. Mark 1, 39 to 42. Praise the name of the Lord. When he preached in the synagogue, the Bible says he cast out all devils. A leper came to him, beseeching him, if you can, make me whole. Jesus Moved with compassion. That's what he want. Jesus moved with compassion. Touched him and said, I will be talking. That's 42. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and it was cleansed. Immediately. Whenever God sees compassion, there will be a flow of the supernatural. When you are praying for somebody, for the salvation, maybe a family friend, the way you pray with compassion determines what happens. And if you have prayed with compassion, you will stretch out to that family. Praise the name of the Lord. The flow of the supernatural. Number four, love enhances speedy answers of prayers. Love enhances speedy answers to prayer. Speedy answer, John 15, 16. If you love God, you will go for soul winning. And when you go for soul winning, God says, whatever you ask of my father in my name, I will give it unto you. Hallelujah. Elijah was a man that was, you know, filled with the love of God. He was jealous for anything God. Just like a man will be jealous of his wife and will not allow anything to touch his wife. Elijah was jealous of God. The 450 prophets of God, he took them to task. And God responded with fire. Praise the name of the Lord. First Kings chapter 19. At another time, First Kings chapter 19, verse 10, he was jealous of God. And then in First Kings chapter 18, verses 42 to 46, he prayed for rain to come. God answered his prayer quickly. Quickly. Even though there was no sign initially. Number five, love enhances our access to fresh and increasing unction. Love enhances our access to fresh and increasing unction. First Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14. David was a man after God's heart. And we saw what happened in his life. He was a man full of power. First Samuel 13, 14. A man after my own heart. And the Bible says in Psalm 89 verses 20 to 24. I found David my servant. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I will beat down his foes. I will fight all his enemies. God stands to defend lovers. Lavish his power upon him. You want to increase in power, in unction. Just let your love for God keep burning. Number six, love empowers us for a life of consecration. Love empowers us for a life of consecration. Paul was a lover of God as we have established. And we saw how he lived a life of consecration. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. How he lived a life of consecration, a life of holiness. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. So when you are a lover of God, God empowers you to live a life of holiness. A life of consecration that 
can stand and please him in the name of Jesus. This service is enough, is enough. You are serving God, you are not permitted to serve any evil. Enough is enough. Those who serve God should not serve sickness. Those who serve God should not serve evil. Anything that is not of God in your life shall be cancelled today in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear your loud amen. I didn't hear your loud amen. I didn't hear your loud amen. In Exodus chapter 5 and verse 2, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. <laughs> That's Pharaoh boasting. I will not let these people go. But when he saw the miraculous hand of God, the Bible says he urged the people to go speedily. Every Pharaoh that has vowed that you will not go, they will go for you in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is the source of that sickness that have lingered long in your body, I command judgment against them in the name of Jesus. The way you answer your amen, determine how fast God manifests. Enough is enough. It's a statement generally made when a situation or challenges of life becomes unbearable. What is this? Is this what, how I'm going to end my life? Is this how I'm going to carry on? No. When a situation becomes unbearable. Sometimes it can come from an individual. And at another time it can come from God. Enough is enough. Means that evil is enough. That sickness is enough. That frustration is enough. That stagnation is enough. That barrenness is enough. That mockery is enough. Can I hear you shout a louder amen? amen? Now say to yourself, enough is enough. Shout it one more time. We saw from the scriptures several times we have People needed to get to a point where they say, enough is enough. In the case of Elijah and Jezreel and Jezebel in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verses 1 to 4 after that great exploit of Elijah and the Bible says after he finished the prophet of Baal now Jezebel was after his life and began to pursue him. And the man of God flee. And in verse 4, the Bible says, He himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested from himself that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my father's. You see, this statement could be positive or negative. Sometimes a man can be beaten by the situations of life. And Satan will show you as if there is no any other way. And you come under a juniper tree. Juniper tree is a place of disappointment. It's a place of hopelessness. Where a man begins to sit and sob and cry. And begin to question God. Oh God, I thought I'm serving you. I thought I'm serving you. All the oppression we have ever had here, there is no one I didn't partake. And up till now, to give me a job is a problem for you, oh God. Job, job, job. I'm tired. Have I not been serving you, God? Begin to recount all. And now Satan gets you to a point where it looks as if, look, I'm just fed up. Some people who were active Christians before, Satan has pushed them under the juniper tree. Very vibrant before. But the challenges of life 
has gotten them to a point and now they are they are psychedelic Christians. They are just cool. They are just there as if they are not there. Just come to church, do their thing, carry their Bible, after they go. These were frontline Christians, soul winners, people who will stake their life before. But Satan has gotten them to a point where they feel that God is not even faithful. If God can do it, wouldn't he have done it? And they have gotten to a place of hopelessness. That today I stand before you by the Spirit of God to make bold to say that issue. My God will intervene in the name of Jesus. Job said, All the days of my appointed time, I shall wait until my change comes. I don't care what position Satan has sent you to. Maybe you are sitting under a juniper tree right now, like Elijah, when he said, enough is enough. Take my life. But the good news is that there is hope for you. I say there is hope for you. I say there is hope for you. Whatever the enemy has done in your life, it shall be undone today in the name of Jesus. Whatever Satan has told you is impossible, my God will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. Look at the case of, the, of Jabez in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verses 9 to 10. 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verses 9 to 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would have blessed me indeed. And enlarge my cause, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it will not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Jabez was a man that had suffered from his birth. The moment he was born, I don't know the circumstances for which he was born, but his mother called him Jabez, which means sorrow. I don't know what happened during that time he was born. Maybe the family lost something very precious and the whole house was thrown into pain and sorrow and suddenly Jabez was born at that time when every person was mourning. And they asked, what name should we give him? And they said, what, name, what other name should we give him? Is it not sorrow? And they called him sorrow. And since that time, Everything about the life of Jabez was sorrowful. Even when everybody was excited, the moment Jabez comes here, sorrow comes in. Nothing good about his life. There was nothing to celebrate about his life. Only worse and worse and worse. But one day, Jabez got to a point. He said, enough is enough. Ah, uh-uh. ah, enough is enough. I can't continue my life this way. Satan is not my maker. God is my maker. The one who created me say I'm beautiful, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, no matter how this situation has lasted, it's not everlasting. It must, it, it must drop today. Oh God of heaven! He called on the name of God and reacted and his situation changed. I don't know, I don't care how long you have been carrying that issue. Today, it must give way in the name of Jesus. Look at the four leopards in 2 Kings chapter 7. From verse 1 to 12. 2 Kings 7 verse 1 to 12. They were there at the gate. They were there at the gate. And there was famine. And then they have been there for long. They say to one another, excuse me, we have been here for long. Since we have been here, nothing has happened. Why would we sit here and die? We have been complaining here since. We have accused everybody. Blame everybody. For our predicament. But nothing has changed where we are. Complaint does not change things. It only complicates matters. 
And some people just sit down and begin to complain, complain, point accusing fingers at everybody, their father, their mother, their uncle, their brother, the church, the, their, everybody. Everybody, they, they accuse everybody. And they are still on the same spot because complain and complain and blaming does not change situation. Those who blame, they remain lame. Complain will complicate your matter. They sat on there, but one day, somebody said, excuse me, look, we have been here for long and nothing has changed. Let's stop complaining. Instead, let us be positive. Let's take steps. Let's take steps. It's better to die taking steps than to die sitting down doing nothing and accusing somebody as the reason for our predicament. Since you lost your job, have you not just sat down and start blaming? Hey, this world is wicked, though. My best friend was the one who had this my problem. You, that cannot change things. Stop crying on split me. That one is past. Take step. Enough of this frustration, enough of this begging life. Do something! Get rose up! Enough is enough! I can't die in this poverty. I can't die in this life of mockery. Every day I will be begging people, begging to eat, begging this one, begging this one. No! This is not life. This is not the life that God talks about. They took steps. And when they took steps, the supernatural came. Leopards with hand like this, feet. And as they moved, the Bible said the armies right there were hearing sound. God amplified their, their steps. Wow. Cool. Cool. Wow. And the armies that have plenty of food and resources in the town, when they had us, hey, the enemy is coming, bro, bro. they ran away and left everything they had. And the lepers got there. They saw all manner and said, Waiting be this. If now you waiting, you go do first. Pray. You just sit down in one portion, eat, eat, eat until you sleep on the food. It was so much that they had to call people from the city to come and help eat with them. Carry things. Why? Because they reacted. They reacted. Said, no way. Until there is a reaction. There can never be a manifestation. They reacted. And God manifested himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody must react this morning. Two things that will take you out from that life of stagnation, that evil state. Service to God. When you are committed to serving God, God will make sure that you don't suffer. When you are committed to serving God, God will make sure that the devil cannot hold you down anymore. When they covenanted to serve God, he gave them all around rest. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, Verses 12 to 15. Serve God. Serve God. Serve God. And number two, when you are all out, you must react. Don't just be serving God and be keep, react. Enough is enough. This life of poverty, enough. This life of sickness, as one of your child is getting healed, the other one is they are, they are just passing the battle. Like marathon race. Like a... What is it called? Like relay. Just passing the battle. You come back from hospital. Two days you go to another... That's not your portion. Enough is enough. React. This life of joblessness, you go to interview, you are the best, but they don't call you. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This life of brothers coming around you, Talking sweet, sweet words, but refusing to approach you for marriage. Oh, sister, I like your dress. So beautiful. Your hairstyle is good. It's good, huh? Any man will be proud to have a wife like this. So good. They will be talking in parable, enjoying your company. Enjoying your company. In you two, you are there following them like sheep. They won't say anything. They won't say anything. Time is passing. 
Are you going for outreach today? Let's go together now. I'll meet you in church. They reserve seats for you in church. They sit by you. You go for outreach. They phone you, talk. But they never talk anything close to marriage. Just enjoy your company. And, and every other person around thinking that you are in a relationship, they go away. Suddenly, one day they just come to you and say, Sister, we well, thank God, let's thank God. Please thank God for me. Oh. God has done it. You say, hey, what has God done? Ah, by the grace of God, I've located somebody to marry. You say, eh? <laughs> eh? You're a wicked person. You're a wicked brother. You're a wicked brother. Wicked for where did I? I tell you, sir, I won't marry you. And that's how it has been. Enough is enough. Anything that is not godly, anything that is not palatable in your life, react. Until there is a reaction, there is no manifestation. Very soon we are going to rise up to pray. But first thing first, if you are here, you are not born again, you have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are the first person I want to pray with. Because no matter your reaction, Satan will just be mocking you. You are not born again, you are, you are shouting, Satan, leave me, I buy you. Satan said, who you they buy? Me. And they wait for you for gate there. Praise the name of the Lord. You must be born again. You must secure your connection to God. That is the strength of your life. You have been coming to church, but you know you are not born again. Today is that day. You were born again before, but you were there because of those challenges. Return to him today, and he will accept you. Wherever you are, you are in these two categories. Quickly, God is too much in a hurry. Something is happening in this congregation today. Some chains will be loose here today. Some people are going free. Anyone that will tie you down, between now and the next seven days, they are in trouble. Fire will burn them wherever they are. If you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, in these two categories I've mentioned, I'd like you to rise up on your feet wherever you are. I want to pray with you now. Quickly, quickly. Forget about your neighbor. Everybody is born again except you. Except you. Rise up now quickly. 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 God bless you wherever you are. Rise up quickly. Take your Bible, your bag. Start coming towards me now. Church, help me clap for them. Come quickly. Don't say no. Don't say no. Don't say no. This is a very serious thing today. Are you not tired of that life of struggle? Satan keeps manipulating your life. It, not, not after you came here today. Come quickly. Church, are you clapping for them? Massive soul. Are you clapping for them? They are coming from everywhere. Run, run from wherever you are. Come quickly. Come quickly. Oh my God, I thought somebody is clapping. I did it. I thought you loved Jesus more than that. Clap for him. Give him a shout. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him for this. Let's celebrate him. See how he's bringing souls to Jesus. Aren't you excited for everyone's soul? There is jubilation in heaven. I thought you would clap more. I thought you would shout. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting. Don't be the last person. Run from wherever you are coming from. Run. As I'm speaking now, some people are still seated. Something is telling you. Oh, you will do it another day. Everybody is looking at you. Don't go, don't go, don't go. That's the devil. He wants to steal your miracle today. Rise up! Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Begin to come, begin to come, begin to come, begin to come. Come on, rise up, begin to come. Thank you. Some are still getting up. Help me clap for them. Some people are coming from the back. See somebody running from the back. Are you clapping for Jesus? Somebody is running from the back. Oh, the devil is in trouble. They are coming, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. They are coming. Come and clap for Jesus. They are coming. They are coming. See them running. See them running. Give Jesus a shout. Give Jesus a shout. Give Jesus a shout. They are coming. They are coming. See them running. See them running. Two people are still running from the back. Two people are still coming from the back. Come quickly. Come quickly. Stand up right now and begin to come. Stand up and begin to come. Stand up and begin to come. Hallelujah. All these wonderful people, 
I'm so excited for you. Because this is a step that you must take if you must enjoy your liberty. And I'm glad you took this step. From today, things begin to turn around for good for you. In the name of Jesus. Bow your head. Put your right hand on your chest. And pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I recognize I'm a sinner. You died for me. You took away my sins. You paid with your blood. You paid with your blood. Jesus, my heart is open. Come into my heart today. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. Because I believe in my heart. And I confess you with my mouth. Now I am born again. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Leave those hands on your chest as I pray. Leave those hands on your chest. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this special soul that you have saved into your kingdom today. I ask that you keep them. And let none of them be lost in the name of Jesus. I decree a divine touch over your life. You will not go back. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations over your eyes. Congratulations. In first Samuel chapter 16 and verse 13. Samuel took a horn of oil after blessing it. He poured it on the head of David before his brethren. And the Bible said the spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. When this oil is blessed, it's no more oil. It becomes a special anointing. It becomes the power of God. And there is no thing the power of God cannot handle. In Isaiah 59 and verse 19, when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up his standard against him. The spirit of the Lord. The anointing oil is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So as this oil is blessed right now, it becomes the spirit of the Lord to destroy all those things that is holding down your destiny that says you won't go. Hallelujah. Lift up that oil as I bless it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare this oil blessed. I release the power of God upon it. It shall be for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is released upon these bottles right now. Lord, I decree whatsoever evil that is operating in the lives of your people by this anointing, the yoke shall be broken. In the name of Jesus, from this day, that oil in your hands become a rod of signs and wonders. It will swallow every magician's rod in the name of Jesus. Put a little on your palm right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, help your neighbor. In case your neighbor does not have one. And all those in the Believers Foundation class ensure that all the converts are doing the same. Father! In accordance to your word, in Isaiah 10, 27, in that day shall come to pass, the body shall be taken away from your shoulders and the yoke of your neck, and it shall be destroyed by reason of the anointing. By this anointing, every long-standing issue of reproach be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Just like the rod swallowed up all the rods of the magician. Let it swallow up every evil in the lives of your people today. Stagnation is swallowed up by this anointing. Barrenness is swallowed up by this anointing. Joblessness is swallowed up by this anointing. Lack of marital settlement is swallowed up by this anointing. Sickness of any type is swallowed up by this anointing. Satanic manipulation is swallowed up by this anointing. By this anointing, every yoke is here by the straw. Frustration is the straw. Every evil work is the straw. In the name of Jesus. Put it upon your forehead now. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Maklato Zuseli produce kleketo. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Mariano Rosso Zodo Brodo Secleketeri do Rosa. Maliato Rosesa. Clatanda Rusa. Meriato Soto Cotosisa. 
Maklia to Robolo Sezia, Mashata, Roketo Susa. Destroy that issue. Destroy that issue. Destroy that issue now. Otosia, Maklatosia, Pakla Paranda Rabala Boliato Rosese, Etusa Ziza Labro Diagla Baba Baba. Blessed be your name, Lord. Meshita, Maklatosiza. In Jesus. Mighty name we are praying. I decree because you are serving God, they shall serve the Lord their God, they shall bless their bread and their water. I will take away sickness from the midst of them. Whatever it is that is a pressure around your life, it is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Any kind of evil, I decree, enough is enough in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, sickness shall have no portion in your life anymore. Evil report shall not be named with you anymore. The Egyptians you saw before, you shall see them no more. Every cause that is at work in your life is here by broken in the name of Jesus. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He that is blessed cannot be cursed. That cross is nullified in the name of Jesus. Take your liberty now. Take your liberty now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take a little on your lead right now. Whatever it is, take a little on your lead. We are taking it inside now. Whatever internal disorder, whatever thing that is moving in your system, whatever sickness that is associated inside, high blood pressure, liver problem, kidney problem, intestine problem, menstrual problem, fertility problem, whatever it is, as you take this anointing right now, no more in the name of Jesus. Take it in now. If the Son of God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Your liberty is guaranteed now. No for you. No weeping for you. No breakdown for you. No rushing you to hospital. In the name of Jesus, only good news shall you receive this week. You will receive miracle telephone call this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen or ear heard shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. God bless you.